Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. We're going over the theory for chapter 12, the compound interest and present value. Um, I had thought this was only going to take uh, two videos. It's going to take three, possibly four. So uh, just bear with it. Okay, so in the previous videos, we had talked about simple interest and compound int versus compound interest. Let's get down. There we go. Come on. Come on, slide. All right, there we go. Simple interest versus compound interest. And then we had also talked about uh, a lump sum versus an annuity. Annuity being payments. And annuities are going to be covered in Chapter 13. And we had also talked about the present value or future value. Okay. Um, we're, you know, it's a relationship. All right. It's, you know, today, what would be the value sometime in the future? Okay, of that same amount, or, and that's based upon the time and the interest. Uh, or we can look at the future and say, a future amount and say, what would it be worth, you know, in today's dollars as a present value, okay? And again, that's because of time and interest. Now notice I said time and interest twice. Okay. Right. The reason why I mention that is let's talk about uh, evolution and rounding here. And you'll see where this all goes. Okay. Um, you know, many, many years ago, let's say 200 years ago, um, if you had, uh, you know, let's say you had, uh, you decided you wanted to take out a mortgage for $100,000, and it was a 12% interest, and you wanted to do it for 30 years, okay? Somebody would have to go, and, fi and you wanted to know what the monthly payment was. Payment. Somebody would have to go and do all the calculations um, 360 times and of course because they're human they would have to do it a second time right and if they didn't match they would end up doing it a third time okay so obviously it took an awful long time okay in order to be able to uh, figure that stuff out so what happened is is in this century the mathematicians came along and they looked at this problem and they said, ah, there's got to be an easier way. And what they did was, was they came up with formulas. Right? Now these formulas are going to be for the lump sum and in the, few, in the next chapter for the annuities. But they figured out these formulas and you can see them um, as footnotes in your chapter. Okay. Now, if you happen to be moving on into uh, like financial accounting or definitely as an account, you're going to have to be able to work these formulas. But don't be all freaking out over that um, because you're going to have a lot of practice if you're if you stick in the you know business uh, curriculums for those who are doing vet tech and medical and you are doing the math applications it's not that important that you know how to work the formulas okay just be aware that you know that the formula is the basis for what i'm going to be talking about here so let me just give you an example of a formula okay so we have um, uh, one plus interest raised to the nth power okay um this uh this the A is the compound amount, P is my principal, times the quantity, one plus an interest rate, all raised to a number of periods. Now, remember I had said, pay attention to this interest rate and this number of periods. Okay. So the mathematicians came out with a formula, and what that allowed them uh, to do is instead of having to perform 360 calculations multiple times, now instead of that many calculations, they only really needed to do about 10, all right? 10 calcs, right? And they, you know, be able to just double check that. So things became more efficient, less prone to error, and that was a good thing. It took less time, okay? Um, but the mathematicians also noticed that there was that relationship between the uh, number of periods and the interest rate. And what they were able to do is they came up with factors based upon the number of periods and the interest rate, and they put them into tables. So here's a table. Um, there's two sets of tables. There's one set for lump sum, and there's also sets of tables for the annuities. Now, again, the annuity tables will be in Chapter 13. Okay, 
So in this chapter, you're going to see the tables for the lump sum. Also be aware that uh, on your My Courses page, uh, there is a business math handbook. There's a link to the business math handbook, which gives you a much more detailed set of tables that you can use, and you will definitely have to use that. Um, the, the textbook does reference the business math handbook. For example, if you can look at the, the table here, you see these are all in, um, you know, one, one and a half, two, you know, it went from one, there's one percent, this is one and a half, this is two, but then it jumps to three, four, five, six percent, seven percent, eight percent. Well, what if I wanted to know what six and a half percent is? Okay, it's not on this table, and that's where you're going to have to reference the business math handbook from. Okay, so just be aware that that's on your My Courses page, and if you need it, you know, go there. Me personally, I would have a tendency to use these tables first, and if I didn't find it here, then I would jump out to the math handbook. Okay. But the thing about these here tables is um, there's that correlation between the interest rates across the top and the number of periods down the side. Right. So I have my interest and in percents across the top and my number of periods down the side. And when you cross reference, so let's say I'm at 8% and I'm looking at the number of periods 10, I come up with this factor, 2.1589. Okay. Now, because I have this factor, I don't need to work through the formula. Okay. I could take my principal amount, say it was $1,000, okay, and 0, 0.21589, right? and I go 4, 2, 3, 4. So, I multiply by the factor and I get $1,002 and I'm going to round up to 16 cents, okay? Which means that that $1,000 at 8% interest over 10 periods, whether that's months, years, whatever, okay, will yield $1,002.16. And if I subtract out the $1,000 of principal, that means $2.16 is my interest amount. Okay, so it incorporates that, and we'll do enough problems so that you'll see this again and again and again. Okay, but what I want you to be aware of is that you're coming out with the factor, okay, and use the factor times your principal amount in order to figure out what your future value in this case is. Okay, this table is for a future value, and it's of one dollar. The next table is a present value table. Okay, of a dollar, and it's for at the end of a period. Now, realize that whether it's the beginning of a period or at the end of a period um, is going to make a difference as to how much interest you're going to pay. I mean, obviously, if I'm if I owe something and I'm going to make that payment at the end, then I've had that money um, for that period of time without any interest but if I make that period and if I make that payment in the beginning of the period well then obviously I'm not um, uh, accruing any interest during that period of time so there is a difference between beginning and ending okay um, and it, for this uh, this math um, just be aware that it's there um, and but you're not going to get involved with it that much unless of course in the future in another subject you know for business students also realize that these tables are for a dollar okay what does that mean well when you figure out a factor let's take eight percent at uh, ten periods well that you know if since this is a present value my factor is 0 0.4632 okay well we had you know in the previous slide the future value slide we had figured out that a thousand dollars at eight percent for 10 periods was going to be a thousand two dollars and sixteen cents well if we knew that's our future value amount okay now remember from the uh, previous uh, uh, video we had a present value over here and we had a future value over here and I had said if we know this future value amount 
we can always work back and find out how much that is in today's dollars. Well, if we know the future value is this amount and we're using the present value table, we take and we multiply by that factor, okay? And that should give us the $1,000 today, okay? So we know the future value and we can work back to the present value. They work both ways, but you have to pay attention to which table you're using, okay? Don't just automatically flip the uh, book open, okay, and whatever table you, you know, your feet land on, that's the one you use. No, pay attention to the title in that table, okay. Uh, understand whether you're using, you know, the present value here or the future value here, okay. They both work the same way, all right. You're going to um, be looking at the number of periods, Right, here's the number of periods and the interest rate. Here is the number of periods and the interest rate. What's different is is the factor. You know, notice that for the 10 that was 0 0.432, but up here it's 2.1582. Okay, so. With that said, let's go back to evolution here a little bit. Oops, one more slide. Um, there's also a table here for interest on a dollar um, deposited compound daily, and it's on a 360-day basis. So this table you won't use that much, um, but just be aware that it is there. Um, okay, so let's go back up to evolution here. Okay, so what in, where are we at? Well, we had the mathematicians, and they figured out this here formula, okay? And they came up with this correlation, okay, between the interest and the number of periods, and that allowed them to produce, produce factors, which allowed them to make tables, okay? And what that did is instead of having 10 calculations, now we only have to do two or three, okay? which means you're even more efficient and you're able to, you know, uh, make less errors. Um, but that was before the advent of calculators and computers, okay? So when the calculators and computers came along, um, because we, all we need to do is just identify the variables, interest, um, the number of periods, whether we want a present value, a future value, or a payment, okay, um, in the calculators and the computers, they input the formula themselves because it's a much more exact uh, measurement. I mean, we can count because of the formula, we can calculate exactly. However, when we deal with the tables, we end up with rounding issues, okay, depending upon how far your calculator you know, rounds out or Excel spreadsheet or whatever you're using, um, two different people can do a calculation, the same calculation, let's say this $100,000 at 12% for 30 years, want to know what the monthly payment amount is, and one person could come up with 132.16, and another person could come up with 132.18, okay? Um, if it was using the uh, formula, it's supposed to be 132.16, that's exact, okay? But because of the table, we might end up with 18 and there's a little bit of a rounding issue. Now, this isn't so important when you're talking about small amounts of money. I mean, let's face it, you know, borrowing on $100 is nothing, okay? But if you're borrowing $2,386,427.15, okay, and you're using a table, you know, you might be off by you know, a hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and that's not good. Okay. So you end up having more using the formula itself. So where does that leave us? Well, when you're, when we're talking about rounding, if you're supposed to have a number 132.16 and you end up with 133.08, that's wrong. Too far off. If you end up with 132.18, you know, um, that would be acceptable and that would be right okay because we can't tell with you know calculator rounding so just be aware of that when you're doing the problems um, when we grade 
we take that into consideration. Okay, so there's we don't get into this ambiguity. Well, um, you know, it's calculated rounding. No, you could be too far off in your calculated rounding, and without getting into it, math uh, uh, accounts. Uh, understand how to account for how far off you're supposed to be. So uh, being in math applications, you know, as long as you're close, okay, you're good enough. Okay? So with that said, I'm going to stop right now and then come back in, in another video um, and address a couple other things.